Hello, my name is Linda and 2021 saw me take my passion for my garden and turn it into a small business and that is Springfield Garden Flowers where I sell fresh seasonal cut flowers. So my season runs from March and April with the first tulips and daffodils right through to first frosts with dahlias. And today I'm going to show you what July looks like in my garden and make an arrangement. So one of the things about the arrangements that I do is that I actually use very little structural foliage and tend to opt for um, pieces like this here. So strong stems, maybe branching stems um, that still have a little bit of colour. This is going to be a very bright and cheerful arrangement. And this here is called Clary Sage. So this one's purple, comes in shades of pink and white as well. And I would sow this in the autumn time to flower from the beginning, end of May, beginning of June. So what I'm going to do now is take off some excess stems with a pair of secateurs or sharp scissors. So some of these ones, oh, at the side. And then what I'm going to do is carefully take off some leaves. You want to make sure that you take off all the leaves that are going to sit below the waterline. It's very important that your base is clean and um, that you change the water maybe every other day. And what helps to keep it clean is no leaves beneath the water. So be a bit shorter. I'm also cutting at a 45 degree angle and that angle allows there to be a greater water uptake from the plant. I'm actually going to strip some of these off, these wee bracts. So these all flower. And then what we will do is we will add another piece, maybe just slightly shorter here. Clary will bend towards the light. So I have had these, uh, I picked these fresh this morning before it got very, very hot. And I had them sitting in my utility room to condition so that just means they're sitting in a bucket of cool water. And uh, these ones here, they have just, they have gone towards uh, the light coming in from the window. Next up, I have some calendula. This one here is called Indian Prince. I have a few other colours as well. This one's slightly brighter and it's called Orange Flash. And then I have another one which is more muted, slightly uh, more peach over orange, and it is called Sunset Buff. Now, one of the good things about Calendula is, again, it has a very sturdy stem. And if I show you on this one, this bud here is orange on the tip, and a few, well, Pick it like it is now. This here will open in a couple of days. Now there is one here and it is completely green. There is no orange on it at all. So the chances are it probably won't open. Um, it probably won't open at all um, because it might not be completely formed. So what we'll do is we'll pop this one in. So 
So I have a larger one here as well. So I'll strip off some, some leaves from the top. Because obviously the more leaves there is, then there's um, less water goes to the actual head of the flower. And you want to keep all the water going up to the head to keep it to the bloom to get as much as possible. Calendula is a, a very good flower for your garden. It's brilliant for pollinators, but it's also a very good companion plant um, if you're growing vegetables, which I do as well. I have my own garden, which we're renovating at the moment, um, and it will be generally herbaceous plants and shrubs. And then I have a separate patch for the cut flower patch. And then I also have a vegetable patch. So the calendula is brilliant um, to pop in between your vegetables to help keep uh, the pests at bay. So next up, I have, oh, I have two things here. I have some ami. Ami is um, quite similar to cow parsley, so it is uh, in that it is white, just white, sort of dainty and frothy. You need to pick it, as you can see here, this head is completely white and full, whereas the wee one beneath it is just slightly green. Now, I've had these conditioning all day and it hasn't... Um, welted, it hasn't fell over. So it should be okay, but you'll notice um, sort of yourself if uh, if it's not going to work out, you can just cut those wee pieces off. Ami, I sow this in the autumn time. And some of these plants, actually, most of these plants that you can succession sow. So that means you might sow them uh, in the autumn, then maybe sow again in spring, and um, sort of end of spring, beginning of summer. So especially the likes of myself because I'm cutting them constantly um, I would succession so but you don't need many plants if you want to have a cut patch for yourself one of the good, one of the things that I enjoy about gardening is the wonky stems um, so not everything is tied up straight not everything is stacked and uh, I quite enjoy working with these bendy stems. I think they just, they add another dimension uh, to your arrangement. going to add in now some red and this takes the form of Jane. So Jane is a perennial. So far all of these have been annuals and they will self seed. If you let them go to seed, um, they will drop their seed and come again the following year. But this Jane is a perennial so this will just come back, come back each year reliably. I'm just going to pop a few of 
few of these in. Looks like for the lights. And the key is just to keep working around in a circle just until you've the whole phase uh, filled. So let me see. Next, I think I'm going to add in another purple. This one's corn flower. I have it sitting here in pink as well. And corn flower again is an annual. Can be sown in the autumn time or in spring. It's actually edible comes in shades of pink, purple and blue. Blue is lovely, um, cornflower blue. And um, it's edible. You would see it maybe in salads. Also like the calendula, edible as well. But this one is a great, great um, for pollinating insects. And I quite like to keep its foliage on. You can see it's uh, very dainty. And again, wonky stems. So this is just the way this one has grew. Um, towards the light outside. Right. None of these plants, none of these flowers need special attention. They can all be grey outside, so they do not need to be grown under cover or um, with any protection. They are all holiday annuals, so that just means that they can take our uh, low temperatures in the winter. That one's a bit. I think I might keep this one towards the end. So we're going to add in. This is some yarrow and native mantle. So I grow a summer, uh, well, a Colorado mix. So that is a mix of pastel colours and a bright pink and then ladies mantle. This is just actually going over for me now. This was probably at its best, at its peak in June. So not that long ago, but June time. And this is a, this is a very hardy perennial and this will self-seed. I have it all over a back lane and the lane gets, um, I cut it with the lawnmower. So it doesn't, it doesn't get any special treatment and it's very prolific. Yarrow, yarrow in its white form is very common um, in roadsides, um, but it's also been in the past, again as ladies' mantle, um, been used in the past for medicinal purposes, um, you know, for medicines. Yarrow is very good for drying, so it's a brilliant flower if you want uh, to dry and store something, maybe to make 
maybe to make some crafty bits and pieces come autumn time. So it's a brilliant flower to dry. And what you would do would be cut it in the morning or in the evening, like I do with all the flowers. And leave it to condition. So pop it in some water for, I leave my flowers, um, if I'm picking them up, if I'm picking them at night, I leave them overnight and then make up bunches in the morning. Um, if I'm just picking for myself, I do admit, I will just run out, like you will do, I will just run out and um, pick the flowers that I like and then um, arrange them. So the secret to that is the clean base and the fresh water. And your 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is just slot some of these in lower down. Oh, and what then they will do is fill out the bottom of the base. Snakes for all these flowers can be picked up very easily and Tesco, Sainsbury's, garden centres. So seeds can be picked up. You know, there's nothing, nothing here is a special cut flower variety. They are just um everyday, just to tidy up, everyday flowers that you can buy for your garden. Some of them might be special in that uh, I've paid attention, you know, some of these you can get in a dwarf variety. So obviously I've chosen taller versions. Just keep working your way around, 45 degree angle, and taking off any, taking off any um, leaves. And then you can just fix as you go, because some flowers might get hidden and tucked. So I think that's starting to take shape. I'm going to add some a different uh, shape and texture. This is called Billy Buttons. So Billy Buttons. And this is bright yellow. So it's a different shape um, to everything else that we have here, everything else that I have today. And it's brilliant for drying as well. Last, but by no means least, we're going, I'm going to add some snapdragons. So this one here is called chromic orange. So it's orange and bright pink or, um, yeah, orange and bright pink. So it's a very uh, tropical arrangement we've got going. I've got going on today. So again, 45 degrees. Now, snapdragons as well, they bend towards the light. So just like the clary, I've had these sitting in water in my utility room. So these are quite nice 
sort of coming tying up above the rest of the flowers. They are what we would call a spike flower. So this one here is called Madam Butterfly Bronze. And if I hold it up against the prolite orange, you can sort of see just the difference in the blooms in the trumpets. This one here is frillier and a more fuller bloom. Similar colours. There's also a Chantilly series and the Chantilly ones are single blooms. I wonder if I got any. So this is a Chantilly series and you can see it's smaller and sort of a more open, wider bloom, what we call a single bloom. So single bloom is something that would be more beneficial for pollinators. So your bees and your insects would find it much easier to get at the pollen compared to a double bloom. Snapdragons can be a little bit more trickier to germinate and to grow compared to any of the other flowers that I've shown today. They take an awfully long time and um, they're one of the ones I would start in autumn time but then maybe wouldn't see any flowers until June whereas corn flowers um, they would maybe be out May time, beginning of May. Um, but no, snapdragons are uh, they are quite quite tricky and quite um, time consuming. But that's not to say that you shouldn't give them a go because they're very rewarding in um, their range of colours and their size and their stems are really, really thick. So, and they're long lasting as well, which makes them a really good cut flower. What have we left? So, I still have a few more pieces of yarrow. I'm just going to put it in. And the yarrow is very good at cushioning and supporting flowers. So, let me just bring this bag out to show you. So what you would maybe do if you were making an arrangement in your hand, you might just pop the yarrow beside a taller, fuller flower, and then that protects this flower from the next one going in here. So they make very good, uh, like we call filler plants. So the yarrow and the lady sample. So I have, I don't have many of these, I only have a few, bright pink cornflower. Where could we, yeah, I think just Here towards the bottom. So in this base, there's lots of variety, texture, colour, and also flowers that can be used um, for other things. You know, so you've got flowers that can be dried and uh, edible flowers as well. Okay, so last but not least, so I don't know what side 
It all looks really good. I don't know what side we'll use as the front. Um, I have got, this is a special flower. So this is a poppy. Now, poppies are gorgeous out in the garden, but they're very, very fleeting. So one day there'll be a tight closed bud. The next day you will see maybe a little, a little slit, a little glimmer of colour. And depending on the weather, so if it's been a really warm day, maybe by the end of the day, that bud will have opened and produced a beautiful bloom. However, on the third day, it could be gone. The slightest breeze uh, could take those petals away. They're very paper, they're like crepe paper. Um, but they are beautiful. They're beautiful when they're on mass. And um, this one, this one is called Shirley. So I think Shirley, you only have one. This is my only one of them to face. And I thought I would cut it for today. I think I'll pop you in there. You can take pride of place at the front. Yeah. So they're very fleeting and the best way to treat them if you want to bring them indoors to enjoy inside is to sear the end of the stem and by searing I mean dipping it into boiling water. It might seem harsh but you know one, one centimetre, one to two centimetres and that allows air to travel up and your bloom to be able to breathe. Um, otherwise it will just it will wilt, it will flop over. And as I have said, all these other things, they're all hardy, so they don't need any special treatment. And then something I really enjoy, and this isn't something you see very often uh, used by a florist, or maybe in a bunch that you would get from a florist, is some nasturtium. And I guess that that's the benefit about growing your own flowers, is that you can grow so much variety. You can grow flowers that um, flowers can't get their hands on because they're so they're so fleeting and they don't travel well. So I quite like to use nasturtium. I like it, as we can see here, just out over the side. Here. Yeah, this one's quite a straight piece, so we could maybe even just sort of pop it in uh, in the center, and then we can make use of some of the leaves as well. And the is also a great companion plant. Uh, for vegetables and I grow a lot of these. I grow oh I, I grow five varieties this year. Um, this one is called Tip Top Apricot. You can get some that are quite small that grow upright. You can get others that are trailing or climbing. Uh, I'm growing a climbing one in my poly tunnel with my cucumbers and my courgettes. Um, so it's climbing up the same supports. And they're brilliant at just daring pests and uh, helping to keep helping to keep your vegetables healthy. Oh, that one fell out. So when it comes to cut flowers, um, if you want to grow a cut flower patch yourself, a few packets of seed, pick them up in the autumn time and you'll have really big and strong healthy plants that you can plant out say March next year. Hardy annuals, it doesn't matter if frost is uh, still due, they should be fine. Any half hardies like 
zinnias and dahlias or cosmos you wouldn't be starting those until april april may may you wouldn't actually be starting those until may and um quite a lot of these apart from snapdragons you could actually the likes of calendula clary uh calendula clary cornflower um in the spring you could just scatter seed and those would grow away same with your nasturtium after the first frost scatter some seed and those would grow ha happily away for you there we go i think let's see what could we do to get this one to sit We are all done. If I move this forward. And there we go. So this is a typical uh, bunch. Okay, these. These are the typical flowers that would grow in my garden in uh, July. So it's very bright and cheerful. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to show you a slideshow, um, a short video of some other flowers that are in my garden. So some that have been and um, some plants, some flowers that are due to come. So it will just sort of uh, take you through my gardening year so far. So thank you very much for listening.